As Britain prepares to go to the polls, there is one issue that has risen above the usual partisan fray to become a symbol of the country's struggle to maintain its place among prosperous Western nations, the housing crisis. The numbers are staggering. We're effectively short nearly 4.3 million homes, enough to build another city the size of London. If construction had simply kept pace with population growth since the 1970s, Britain's housing stock would be a fifth larger than it is today. This is more than just a policy failure. It reflects a deeper national malaise, a betrayal of the industrious virtues that made Britain a global power. For nearly five decades, we have fallen disastrously behind even our own modest home-building targets, let alone the more robust construction rates achieved by other wealthy European nations. The consequences have reverberated across British society in the form of soaring home prices, intergenerational inequality, and diminished economic dynamism. Let's step back and consider what's at stake here. Housing is not just about putting roofs over people's heads. As critical as that basic function is, stable housing is a key ingredient for strong families and communities. It allows people to put down roots, to feel invested in their surrounding town or neighborhood. It gives children a secure base from which to grow and thrive. Homeownership has long been regarded as a hallmark of responsibility and self-reliance. But for too many younger Britons today, the dream of homeownership feels impossibly out of reach. Average home prices have skyrocketed by nearly 70% just since 2010, outpacing salary growth for most workers. One can hardly blame these rising generations for feeling shut out from the promises that galvanized their parents and grandparents. Little wonder they seethe with resentment at a system they see as rigged against their interests. The poisonous effects spread well beyond personal frustration. The housing shortage constrains geographic mobility for workers, gumming up the crucial flow of human capital to the most productive regions. Areas like London and the high-growth commuter towns surrounding it have become unaffordable for all but the affluent elite. Businesses thus struggle to attract the skilled employees they need to thrive and innovate. Even more pernicious is the subtle drag this exerts on family formation and birth rates. Young people trapped in their childhood bedrooms or forced to rent shoebox flats can hardly be expected to quickly couple off and start families of their own. Britain is storing up a demographic time bomb as its population ages and shrinks relative to the number of workers needed to sustain pension and healthcare systems. The roots of this crisis twist back decades, with both labor and conservative governments bearing responsibility. In the post war era, Britain led the way in providing quality social housing through its system of council homes. But ideological backlashes and austerity drives steadily shrank that role over the ensuing decades. Private developers never made up the shortfall. Now, the can has been kicked down the road to the point where Herculean efforts will be required just to make up for past lapses. The two main parties have dueled over piecemeal proposals like marginal tweaks to planning laws or encroaching on the green belt. But as with so many wicked policy problems, a patchwork of technocratic solutions won't suffice. Bolder cultural renewal is required. At its core, the housing mess reflects a broader reality. The fraying of the virtues of responsibility, sacrifice, and farsighted construction that built British greatness. For too long, the body politic has turned a blind eye to the obvious arithmetic of failing to build homes at the needed rate. Special interests have been prioritized over national needs. Hard choices required for long-term prosperity have been deferred in favor of short-term placebos. In past eras, the British spirit exhibited a muscular honesty in confronting hard truths and doing the difficult work required to keep the national house in order. It constructed an empire and stood alone against fascist aggression. Previous generations did not wilt in the face of daunting arithmetic. They marshaled the political will to meet national necessities head-on. The housing crisis underscores the need for that same willful clarity today. An entire vision of society predicated on impossible housing math has been revealed as unsustainable. Reasserting the ethic of building, investing, and constructing the solid foundations for widespread prosperity is now an existential imperative for Britain. Restoring that ethos may be the only way to truly get the nation's house in order. The next government has a generational responsibility ahead, not just to churn out new housing units, but to renew the cultural backbone that made Britain socially and economically resilient. Individual aspiration and national fortitude are intertwined. Britain's future status rests on summoning the pluck to build anew. New homes, new families, new engines of growth. Britons must prove they still possess the metal to construct a modern great society. 
brick by literal brick if necessary.